Hi, I'm Graham Blackburn, and this is Traditional Woodworking by Hand. And in today's episode, the second of our new series, we're going to be talking about holding devices. In the previous episode, we talked about the bench, and along with the bench, we talked about a number of things that are integral to the bench designed to hold the workpiece. But there are a lot of other holding devices um, that are not necessarily attached to the bench. And as one of the four main rules about woodworking, which is that you must always keep the workpiece secure, today I'm going to show you a bunch of different holding devices that sometimes you can use with the bench, but which you can use on your own, even if you don't have a bench. The Probably the first and the oldest is what's known as the pan screw or the wood screw. And these come in an astonishing range of sizes. You can see there's a little tiny one here. There's a more medium sized one. Here's one that I actually would call a medium sized one. And here's a really big one. Now, they're called hand screws because the two arms are actually screws and the outside one goes through a screw and then pivots in a hole. The inside screw goes through a hole and is screwed into the outside one. The way that you use these is to keep them, keep the two jaws parallel, which you do by rotating like this. Either way, it's important to do this. If you just do one, then sooner or later you break off the threads. So the way to use these, if I wanted to say clamp this piece of wood here, I would put this to where it was almost the right size. If you come closer, you can see that it's a little wider. And then when it's really close, I tighten the inside one to where it's tight. And then by turning the outside one, that clamps the wood in the hand screw. Another kind of hand screw is one that was invented in the last century by a company called Jorgensen. And in fact, now this kind of hand screw is commonly referred to as a Jorgensen. And it differs in that instead of wooden screws, it has metal screws that are threaded through the pivot points on both of the tongues here. And the advantage of that is that you can clamp things together that are not parallel. Look at this. I can put this up here. I can tighten this. And now I have something held really firmly at an angle. So I totally recommend that in your shop, you have a selection of the wooden hand screws as well as one or two Jorgensen screws. The thing to remember about them is that it helps if you keep the jaws clean because after a while they get dirty, they get glue on there, whatever. So uh, I like to keep them scraped clean and maybe even once in a while just a little bit of Vaseline or candle wax, whatever, but you don't want them slipping off the wood. So those are what we call hand screws. Now, the next kind of clamps uh, that are also that derive from the very oldest form of clamps are the long, what we now most of all call pipe clamps. Here is a modern pipe clamp. It's called a pipe clamp because it's just a pipe with two ends on it. Right? And you can clamp anything you like together with this piece of wood here. You simply push this up like that and then tighten it and it can hold lots of things together. The important thing about this is that as with most woodworking, you don't want to damage the work. So unless you have scrap pieces, um, it's always a good idea to protect the jaws with these little slip on plastic caps. These, by the way, they come in different lengths, or you can just buy the fixtures and put them to your own pipe. You can use them 
in pairs. If I had a really long piece of wood, I might put, put one here like this. And then I could go over here to my pipe clamp rack and I could get out another pipe clamp and I could loosen this. And now, doing this, I now have two jaws between here and here. I can clamp a really long piece of wood, which is not to say that if you look around, you can't actually find old versions that are really, really long. But the pipe clamp is the commonest, least expensive one. Uh, these nice long old ones are a little harder to find, but they'll do the same thing too. Now, perhaps even more common than hand screws and pipe clamps are these kind of clamps. And as with all the other kind of clamps, they come nice long ones like this, and they come medium size like this, you know, so you can clamp two pieces of wood together like that tighten it if you've got to hold it whatever or you can find really really small ones so i have quite a selection of these if you look around my shop you can see i keep them pinned up uh, you can almost you know the, as the saying goes you can almost never have too many clamps the next kind of clamp are these which also are very convenient if i've got something smaller when i clamp together there's little ones and there's big ones and I have, if you look over here, you can see even bigger ones. Then similar to this are uh, a very specialized one. This is a corner clamp. And I clamp one piece of wood in here. And if it's going to be joined at a mitre, I clamp another piece in here. And this is a way of clamping mitres together. Perfectly, perfectly square. Perfectly, perfectly tight. Now, these are all freestanding clamps. I mentioned that uh, in a previous episode, we talked about the things that go on the bench. I just want to briefly recap those. Here's a bench hook. This is also a kind of a clamp because it allows you to take a piece of wood and hold it really, really firmly. There are a bunch of other things like that. You can clamp this on the bench using one of these clamps and use it as a stop so that now you can plane. The whole thing is that you're keeping the workpiece secure. And one other last uh, clamp is the saw vise. Now the saw vise is a very useful thing. I've mounted it this way around so that you can see it. Usually it would face me, but the saw vise is a, a device that will hold a saw when you're filing or when you're doing things like this. Uh, and you can find these, and they're good not only for holding saws, but also for holding wood. Uh, some of these things that I just mentioned, you would hold in the vise. But by and large, you see there's a whole range of holding devices, and they were actually specialized ones. Here's a version of what's known in the trade as a sticking box. And this is just a little box that you can secure on the bench between the dogs that we talked about in the previous issue. And if you have something round, I think I have something round conveniently here. Uh, well, we'll pretend that this is round. A piece of wood will go in here, right? And it's a box designed to hold something that's not square that won't go in the vise. Related to that, although we'll cover this in greater detail in subsequent episodes, is a mitre box. Most mitre boxes, if you make them yourself, you make them with a little lip. So just like the uh, bench hook, it holds onto the bench like that. And then you put the wood, the workpiece, or whatever it is that you're sawing in here, and you use the guides, the slots, in order to saw the wood off. But essentially, it's a holding device. So there are a lot more of these things that you can make. There are ones like this that you can clamp onto the bench that will hold V-shaped woods or odd-shaped pieces of wood 
but essentially what we're talking about here is devices that you use with or without the bench to hold the workpiece. So I hope you can remember all of that or some of it. If you can't, then remember that all of these episodes are based on chapters in this book that I wrote about traditional woodworking tools. And if you go to the second chapter in here, it's all about holding devices. Uh, is that the second chapter? Yeah, no, there's, there's a second chapter here. Uh, and you can see there are mitered holding boxes. There are uh, shooting boxes. There are things that you can use with wedges. There's a zillion different ways of holding the wood. If you want to see more episodes and not miss anything, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And remember that I welcome your comments and your questions. Um, I, you get a lot of comments, which I like to answer. Um, and the book itself, uh, on which this series is based, this is also available from my website. So I encourage you to look at the book, read the uh, previous episodes, and enjoy your woodworking, making sure that the workpiece is always held securely. Thank you.